99% of developers don't get TCP IP. You hit play on the first episode of Squid Game Season 3. You push a one-line hotfix that accidentally takes down your entire team's prod database. You drop the this is fine meme into your Instagram gossip group chat. In each of these moments, a complex dance of packets unfolds across the globe, all orchestrated by this single protocol. It's the literal bedrock of the internet, the invisible force behind our daily work. As developers, we can resolve race conditions, build complex APIs, wrangle microservices, and ship beautiful React frontends. Yet somehow, we're often strangers to the fundamental protocol that makes it all possible. Could you, right now, confidently explain the real difference between flow control and congestion control? Why does the trace route command use different protocols on Windows than on Linux? And why is the future of the web, HTTP3, being built on UDP instead of the ultra-reliable TCP? If not, you're not alone. When you stream the latest season of Black Mirror on Netflix, your device doesn't get one gigantic file. Instead, it's sliced into thousands of tiny data pieces called packets. It's time to stop treating the internet's core as a black box. Let's dive in. Why do we need TCP IP? Before TCP IP existed, networks were fragmented and incompatible. It's like every manufacturer built Lego bricks differently. None would fit together. TCP IP standardized communication bricks so everyone could play nicely, no matter their hardware or software. This standardization enables interoperability across countless devices and network types, from ethernet cables to satellite links. It's the universal protocol language enabling the internet, a vast interconnected network of networks. But hold the phone, what is TCP IP? TCP IP stands for Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol, a layered set of communication protocols that together make the internet work. Think of TCP IP as the language and rules that allows devices worldwide, phones, servers, smart fridges to communicate reliably despite differences in hardware, software, or network type. TCP IP dictates how data is chopped into manageable packets, how each packet is addressed and routed, how to verify packet integrity, how to detect and fix lost or out of order packets, how to reassemble the original data perfectly. This layered approach allows for great flexibility and scalability, enabling networks ranging from your home Wi-Fi to global data centers. But TCP IP is not a single protocol. It's a layered suite of protocols that work together to enable data transmission across heterogeneous networks. The model is conceptually divided into four layers. The application layer, transport layer, internet layer, and link layer. Each of these layers has a specific role in the communication process. Data generated by an application flows downwards through these layers on the sender side, is transmitted across the network, and flows upward through the same set of layers on the receiver side. This design ensures separation of concerns and allows networks and applications to evolve independently. Now give me a moment to explore each of these deeply. At the top is the application layer. This layer contains the protocols you interact with daily. Web browsers using HTTP and HTTPS, email clients using SMTP or IMAP, file transfers via FTP and domain lookups via DNS. These application protocols don't directly deal with routing or reliability, they simply produce data and pass it to the layer below, the transport layer. The transport layer will handle the mechanics of reliable delivery. So think of these protocols as generating the actual data payload. The TLDR of the application layer is this. This is where user-facing protocols live. HTTP, FTP, SMTP, DNS, generating and consuming data. These protocols almost always use TCP underneath to guarantee reliability, except for some DNS queries and real-time apps that use UDP. Next, we have the transport layer. The transport layer is where the transmission control protocol or TCP resides, and it solves one of the internet's biggest challenges, how to deliver data reliably over an unreliable medium. This is the meat and potatoes. TCP ensures that data is delivered in full, in the correct order, and without errors or duplicates. It does this by first breaking the application data into segments and attaching a sequence number to each. It then sends these segments and waits for acknowledgments, or acts, from the receiver. If a segment is lost or damaged, TCP detects the problem usually through missing acknowledgments or corrupted checksums and automatically retransmits the affected segment. This process is called Positive Acknowledgement with Retransmission, or PAR. To avoid overwhelming the receiver, TCP uses flow control via the sliding window protocol, which allows the sender to send multiple segments before requiring an acknowledgement, but within a limit that the receiver can handle. TCP also adjusts its sending rate based on network congestion. These monitor signs of congestion, such as dropped packets or increased round-trip times and throttle transmission rates when needed to avoid flooding the network. Because of these mechanisms, TCP is considered connection-oriented. Before any data is exchanged, a three-way handshake occurs. 
This is used to establish a virtual connection between the sender and the receiver. This connection establishment happens, for example, when you connect to a website. For example, discord.com for all you discord mods. This handshake synchronizes sequence numbers and opens a virtual connection. A SYN is sent from the client to server, which requests the connection. The server then sends a SYN act to the client, which acknowledges the request and sends an additional request. The client then sends an act to the server, which acknowledges the request from the server. For applications where speed is more important than reliability, like video calls on FaceTime, online games, or live streams on Twitch, TCP can be too slow. In such cases, a different transport layer protocol called UDP, or User Datagram Protocol, is used. UDP is connectionless and does not guarantee delivery or ordering. It simply sends packets called datagrams as fast as possible, relying on the application itself to handle any issues. So you might be asking, Coding Gopher, what does this mean? It means that UDP is ideal for scenarios where it's better to drop a packet than delay the stream. The TLDR for the transport layer is this. It ensures reliable TCP, or fast, connectionless UDP delivery of data, manages packet sequencing, retransmissions, and flow control. So TCP is incredible. It establishes this robust, reliable, one-to-one -one connection to ensure your data gets through perfectly every time. But that very strength, the stable, singular connection, can become a massive weakness. Imagine you're not just loading one web page. Imagine you're a developer building a service that needs to gather public data from thousands of web pages. If you try to open thousands of these TCP connections from your single server, the target's website's firewall will see it instantly. Your server's IP address gets blacklisted and your project is dead in the water. This is the fundamental challenge of large-scale data collection, and solving that exact problem is why I'm going to introduce you to Decodo. Thank you to Decodo for sponsoring this video, the most efficient and powerful way to access and automate web data collection. Decodo, formerly known as Smart Proxy, is a powerful developer-friendly platform that enables you to extract, automate, and scale web data collection using residential proxies, custom scraping scripts, or their universal scraping API. Whether you're a software engineer, product lead, data analyst, or building a data-intensive web business, Decodo offers an all-in-one solution that dramatically simplifies the way you collect and operationalize data from the public web. Decodo makes it incredibly easy to get started. Every product comes with a free trial, 3 days and 100 megabytes of usage for proxy products, and 7 days with 1000 free requests for the scraping API, allowing you to test performance with zero friction. The platform's intuitive dashboard, plug and play scraping templates, and extensive documentation make it ideal for both technical and non-technical users. If you need help, 24-7 technical support is always just a click away. At the heart of Decodo's infrastructure is a massive network of 125 million ethically sourced residential IPs across over 195 global locations. These proxies mimic real user traffic, letting you access virtually any site without getting blocked, throttled, or flagged. Combined with a robust infrastructure, Decodo offers industry-leading success rates, fast response times, and a resilient scraping engine that's production-ready from day one. For data engineers and AI teams, your data pipelines are only as reliable as their sources. When an ETL or ELT job fails because a website blocked your server or changed its layout, your downstream models and dashboards become stale. Decodo's Universal Scraping API acts as a durable, managed data source. It abstracts away the fragility of individual websites, handling bot detection and site changes for you. This means you can build more resilient data pipelines that require less maintenance, ensuring your data lakes and vector databases are constantly fed with fresh, high-quality data for training and RAG systems. For data analysts, your insights are often limited by the columns in your CSV or database table. Imagine you have a list of sales leads. With a simple Python script using Pandas and Decodo's API, you can enrich that in minutes. For each company, you can automatically pull in their industry, employee account from LinkedIn, and recent news from financial sites. This transforms a flat list into a rich dataset, allowing you to build far more powerful models and dashboards in Tableau or Power BI to identify your true ideal customer profile. And for software engineers and QA teams, flaky end-to-end -end tests are a nightmare. Stop debugging test failures caused by your CICD runner's IP getting rate limited or banned by a third-party API you integrate with. By routing your Playwright or Selenium tests through Dakota's network, you can ensure reliable testing of geo-specific features, verify localization by seeing your app from anywhere in the world, let's say Japan, London, or New York, and even perform realistic load testing that simulates traffic from thousands of unique users, not just a single server. Decodo is also surprisingly affordable, with some of the best pricing among premium proxy providers, a pay-as-you-go model, and a 14-day refund policy. You can scale your usage flexibly and with full confidence. Whether you're scraping a few pages a week or orchestrating thousands of concurrent requests, Decodo adapts to your needs without locking you into long-term commitments or overbuilt enterprise contracts. I would recommend that you use the link in the description or pinned comment to try Decodo today and get an exclusive 35% discount on your plan. Alright, now let's get back to the video. 
Let's talk about the internet layer, the global addressing and routing system. Beneath the transport layer is the internet layer which houses the internet protocol or IP, the core of this layer. Every single device on the internet has an IP address, like a phone number or postal address. For example, this local IP could be used within your home's network, and this public IP in this case is Google's IP address. IP is responsible for routing packets across different networks, often across multiple routers and network providers. Each IP packet contains a header with critical fields. The source IP is the sender's IP address. The destination IP is the receiver's IP address. The time to live or TTL is a counter to prevent infinite looping. Every router decrements TTL and the packet is discarded when the TTL hits zero. The header checksum verifies the header's integrity. If corrupted, the packet is dropped. And the protocol indicates the next layer's protocol. For example, TCP would be 6 or UDP would be 17. IP is connectionless and best effort. It does not guarantee delivery, correctness, and order. It simply forwards each packet one hop closer to its destination, based on routing tables maintained by routers. Since IP is connectionless, these routing decisions are made independently for each packet, which means packets from the same session may take entirely different routes through the network, arrive out of order, or even get lost. IP itself makes no guarantees beyond best effort. IP also handles fragmentation and reassembly. When a packet is too large to pass through a particular link because of a smaller maximum transmission unit or MTU, it is broken down into smaller fragments. These fragments are labeled and must be reassembled by the receiving system to recover the original data. However, because IP can lose, reorder, or drop packets, TCP must sit on top to provide reliable, ordered, and error-checked delivery. The TLDR of the internet layer is this. It's responsible for addressing and routing packets using IP address addresses, forwarding them across multiple networks. Now let's talk about the link layer. No, not Link from Super Smash. You can play video games later, we're talking about networking right now. The link layer, also known as the network access layer, is where communication happens over the actual physical or logical network connection, be it Ethernet, Wi-Fi, cellular, or fiber. Here, packets become frames which include MAC addresses used for local delivery within a LAN or local area network segment. The link layer deals with how bits are physically encoded, transmitted, and received across the medium. It also includes ARP, or Address Resolution Protocol, which maps IP addresses to MAC addresses on a local network, allowing IP packets to be properly delivered at the hardware level. The TLDR of the link layer is this. It handles actual transmission of raw bits over local networks. Now let's talk about something that's pretty darn important. As data flows from one layer to the next, a process called encapsulation occurs. Each layer adds its own header information to the data from the layer above. For example, an HTTP request from the application layer becomes the payload of a TCP segment, which becomes the payload of a link layer frame. It's turtles all the way down. Well, in actuality, it's just a series of envelopes. On the receiving end, the reverse process, decapsulation, strips each header in turn as the data moves up the layers towards the application. This encapsulation model is a major reason TCP IP can run on everything from fiber lines to satellites to cellular towers. To manage multiple services on the same device, TCP and UDP use ports which act as virtual addresses for specific processes. For example, web servers usually listen on port 80 for HTTP or 443 for HTTPS, while email uses port 25 for SMTP or 993 for IMAP over SSL. When a connection is made, it is identified by a four tuple, source IP, source port, destination IP, and destination port. This ensures that even multiple applications on the same machine can communicate over the network without conflict. Now let's actually put it all together. I know a lot of you interrogate ChatGPT all the time, so let's use OpenAI as an example. Let's say you type openai.com into your browser. Your device first uses DNS to get the IP. It then opens a TCP connection to the IP on port 443 since you're using HTTPS. TCP performs the handshake, negotiates congestion. The HTTP GET request is segmented, numbered, and sent in IP packets. Routers forward IP packets across the internet. The link layer delivers the physical bits over your Wi-Fi or cellular. Packets arrive, TCP reassembles them in order, and your browser renders the web page seamlessly. TCP IP also works alongside important supporting technologies like NAT, or Network Address Translation, and firewalls. NAT allows many devices on a private network to share a single public IP address by translating internal IPs and ports to public ones. This is very common in home routers. Firewalls inspect and filter packets based on rules involving IPs, ports, and protocols, helping enforce security and access control. Hey, if you learned something new in this video, I would really appreciate it if you left this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on all notifications to get notified for future updates. If you want to learn how to build Redis, Docker, and compilers from scratch, check out Codecrafters using the link in the pinned comment and description for a 40% off. 
As always, thank you very much for watching. It has been great making this video and happy coding.